Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing perfectly fine. So here I am again with a rare case. This case is already published uh, in one of the most esteemed journals, Journal of Lab Physician, and is Scopus and PubMed indexed also. So just I want uh, I want to know how you should approach to a case. Maybe it's a like histo case, cyto case, whatever you get it. How you achieve uh, arrive at a final rare diagnosis, right? So this patient, uh, she came to hospital and she was 52 year old female and she came to hospital and she uh, with she had off and on breathlessness for last three four months along with dry cough and for last two to three days she was having fever also and in fact she had similar history two to three years back but there was no associated hemoptysis joint pain any rash smoke any history of smoking or any other chronic illness in the patient. On general examination, there was no abnormality, but the examination of the respiratory system, the systemic examination revealed fine crepes on intrascapular and bilateral supramammary regions, more on the left side. And when 2D echocardiography was done, it showed normal cardiac chamber dimensions along with normal cardiac valves. So no heart involvement was seen here. Okay, rest of the system examined were within normal limit. And saturation was off oxygen, it was 84%. With oxygen, it was 99%. It was saturation levels were decreased. And blood investigations, the complete routine blood examination, the random blood sugar along with the renal and the liver function tests were perfectly normal within normal range as defined for her age. And fiber optic bronchoscopy was done and no abnormality was detected. But the patient had symptoms, the, the, the x-ray of the patient was done and it showed patchy opacity in the left mid zone. I'll show you the image and right paracardic region with normal cardiac shadows. So I'm just giving you the insight into the case, how you need to approach it. So you should know the clinical history in detail and whenever any cytology specimen, be it FNAC, fluid or histo specimen you are getting, please have a complete history, detailed history of the patient for what examination you are going to do it. Fine. So that gives you a clinical picture or you can create a differential diagnosis that yes, this patient is having so and so problem. So what all differential can be there in our mind before you see the slides. So clinical picture gives you an insight into the case. So on basis of X-ray, the di provisional diagnosis given was pneumonitis. And further CECT chest was done and it showed bilateral ground glass haziness in the lung parenchyma with interlobular septal thickening. The characteristic crazy pavement appearance was noted on CECT chest. So why I'm stressing on this, the crazy pavement appearance is very much characteristic of an entity that is alveolar proteinosis, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, commonly known as PAP. So this was given provisional diagnosis on CECT and but a cytological correlation was advised for a definitive diagnosis. Correlation for uh, this uh, differential diagnosis, provisional diagnosis was given and bronchobalis bronchoalveolar lavage of the patient was advised. So see image left side may you have an x-ray of the, you have the x-ray of the patient of the except the paracardic shadow maybe you have the uh, paracardic region may you have uh, haziness then mid left may mid lower uh, mid lobe region maybe you have mild opacity and then right side you are having the CECT images this is showing a crazy pavement appearance that is very characteristic of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis so when this uh, bronchial lavage was performed for the patient 4 ml thick proteinaceous fluid IR okay? and this fluid was sent to us for uh, cytological evaluation. Grossly it was thick proteinaceous fluid and when we made smears, banwai, to it showed plaques of eosinophilic material, acellular eosinophilic material, scattered macrophages which was filled with similar eosinophilic material and when we got past stain done, the paraidic acid shift stain done, these plaques showed positivity for past stain. Okay, and along with that, what we along with that plux of the eosinophilic material, we have a smear mein, acute and chronic inflammatory cells along with eosinophilia and scattered kahin kahin aapke respiratory bronchial epithelial cells were noted. 
so see this image dense inflammation in background may you can see neutrophils are predominantly along with scatter lymphoid cells and also you can see scatter eosinophils also which which were red red wale honge that is cytop orange is granule wale hote hain that is eosinophil but thick jo jo what is catchy in these slides are the thick plaque like material theek hai a cellular material aise se round round se pink pink se bane hue hain na those are a cellular material theek hai so a hyper image dekho inka एक योसिनोफिल है स्लाइड में राइट साइड अपर कॉर्नर यू कैन सी फाइन देन यू हैव थ्री बिग प्लॉक्स इन दिस स्लाइड एंड डेंस इन्फ्लमेशन है अलोंग विथ फ्यू आरबीसी जो बैकग्राउंड में है सो नाउ वी कैन से कि दीज प्लॉक लाइक ये कुछ डेब्री नहीं है एंड दीज आर नॉट एनी डेफिनेटिव सेल भी नहीं है ये सो दीज आर प्लाक लाइक बट डेफिनेट कुछ तो एबनॉर्मिलिटी है पेशेंट में ठीक है This image is not clear. Actually, I took it in high power. So this is to show you two bronchial epithelial, two three bronchial epithelial cells. The, the ciliated cells, you are seeing in the middle, two three. So those are your bronchial epithelial cells. To say, so this is also required to say, yeah, this is this specimen is a respiratory specimen. Okay, respiratory sample is bronchial level lavage. Ki baad mila hai. So definitely, if it is having bronchial epithelial cells, so that is much more correlating to your respiratory sample. Right? See another. जीम्सा स्टेन स्लाइड है इसमें भी ये पिंक पिंक प्लाक लाइक मटेरियल दिख रहा है यहाँ पे आपको स्केटर्ड मैक्रोफाजेस दिख रहा है विद बबली साइटोप्लाजम आल्सो देन यू कैन सी न्यूमरस न्यूट्रोफिल्स स्केटर्ड ब्रॉन्कल एपिथेलियल सेल्स एंड स्केटर्ड लिम्फॉइड सेल्स बट कैची अगेन आई एम सेइंग इज द पिंक ब्लॉचेज दैट यू आर सींग टू पिंक पिंक ब्लॉचेस दिस इज पास्टेन सो ये पॉजिटिव था पास्टेन में दीज पिंक ब्लॉचेज वेर पॉजिटिव और पास्टेन so this stain why it is required kyunki jo ye pink blotches hote hain na ye aapko kisi aur disease mein mil sakte hain bronchial level lavage pe jo we'll discuss in uh, differential diagnosis but i'm stressing wo sare jo honge wo pass negative honge but this uh, our case was showing pass positivity so these alveolar proteinosis ke jo pink plaques hote hain that will give you pass positivity so based on our clinical radiological special the cct image and cytomorphological findings we gave a diagnosis of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis theek hai initially patient can be given symptomatic therapy oxygen inhalation uh, inhalation dena hua kyunki iska saturation kam ho raha tha patient ka and antibiotic therapy hai for uh, preventing any superarial infection theek hai New, numerous neutrophils were also there the patient must be having certain associated infection also so antibiotic therapy was essential the patient, <coughs> sorry patient was kept under follow up and in fact the patient was currently doing well till uh, for with the conservative management till our last follow up so see this was the our case which we got it published in journal of lab physician when i was working in uh, ramanulaya hospital as senior resident in pathology department so i wrote this case under dr manju koshal and she was our cytopathology head uh, that time so few words about pulmonary alveolar proteinosis hota kya hai ye theek hai this is a very it's not common rare disorder definitely and first time 1958 mein rosen et al ne discuss kara tha isko with patient had did not have any underlying abnormality and then patient was found to have this kind of disease so isme kya hota hai is basically is disease mein ek uh, wo hoti hai deposition of granular extracellular material so extracellular kya hai kyunki ye jo hum pink blotches dekh rahe the na ye cell ke andar nahi the theek hai kisi bhi cell ke koi definite cell nahi tha jiske andar ye pink material deposit ho raha hai so that is why it is known as extracellular pink material hai granular and this is positive for pass and proteins and lipids and diastase resistant diastase se negative aate hain so when we go for etiology exact etiology nahi pata hai it was basically excessive intra alveolar accumulation of phospholipids in pulmonary alveolar proteinosis aur hota kyun hai ye increased deposition of phospholipids because of increased production obviously zyada kyun hoga ya to wo increased production ho rahi hai ya uski secretion zyada increase ho rahi hai of surfactant phospholipids by type 2 pneumocytes so you can say our type 2 pneumocytes are acting like they are uh, uh, acting more and leading to production of increased production and secretion of these surfactants theek hai and secondly production increase ho rahi hai to ek aur second point ho sakta hai defective clearance to clear nahi ho raha alveolar surfactant theek hai or macrophage function ki defect uh, defect alveolar macrophage functions is not um, taking up to mark so affect kaun se age group ko karta hai usually 20 to 50 years 
can be noted rarely in neonate and even elderly. Male female ratio is approximately 2 to 4 is to 1 more in mean, uh, males. And uh, see, patient will present, will have a varied clinical presentation. This is progress is dyspnea on exertion, jada chalne pe, ya fu exercise, kuch exer, difficult kaam karne pe, patient is having difficulty in breathing. So that is your dyspnea. Then chronic non productive cough. Okay? Non productive is what? Without sputum. Okay? Dry cough, you can say. Then fatigue. Jaldi thak jata hai patient. Mild weight loss, uh, weight loss, chest pain, or low grade fever. Hamare patient maybe patient was having two to three days a fever. Okay. So etiology, as I said, maximum is idiopathic, or can be it can be associated with immunosuppression also, or because of some chronic exposure. Agar ho hai, koi silica, aluminium dust, se chronic exposure hota hai patient ko, they can also have this kind of problem. Then, which pulmonary infections ke saath associated hota hai, like nocardia, pneumocystis carinae pneumonia, then uh, what is pneumocystis carinae is now is known as it's pneumocystis hirovishi. It's J I R O V E C I, but we pronounce it as hirovishi. So pneumocystis hirovishi. Then you have cytomegalovirus, tuberculosis, histoplasma capsula, capsulatum. So these infections are there, jinke saath ye associated ho sakta hai, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. So clinically, jo humne literature se padha hai, so three forms of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis can be uh, defined. So, pehla to idiopathic hai without any cause. So, is me multifactorial cause hum determine kar sakte hai, jisse ki kuch combined infection ho patient mein, hereditary factors ho ya environmental factors ho. So, those, those we can say are idiopathic. Second hota hai congenital. So, mutation. Ye by birth hoga. So, it can be due to uh, mutation in genes which will encode for protein BC or beta C chain of receptor for granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor, GM CSF. So, wo increase karega maybe indirectly, indirectly related to increase in type uh, 2 pneumocyte ke functions mein. Okay. Then secondary pap, secondary pap, se secondary hum kyun kehte hai? Because of some in association with some other disorders. Kuch hematological malignancy thi patient ko. Kuch ya, drugs ke me or patient may be on immunosuppressive therapy. Or patient is chron having chronic uh, exposure to inorganic dust like silica or toxic fume. Ya kuch infection ke baad agar ye ho raha hai, that is your secondary pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. Okay. So these findings, when we have clinically, dekha, radiologically, we have definitive diagnosis hamara hamesha biopsy. Hoti hai. Okay. So it can be transbronchial lung biopsy or open lung biopsy specimen. But the point, the difficulty is in this case. Mein. See, the crazy payment we have seen in the lung mein hai, overall entire. When you have bronchial biopsy, you have low, transbronchial low, or then you have open lung biopsy. Lo, it is very Difficult that you have a small biopsy, biopsy is very small. So, in that small biopsy, we have a representative area aya ya nahi aya. So, that is very difficult to ascertain when you see the slide. Okay. But, the ball is bronchial will lavage. We are infusing normal saline and then taking out. So, lavage, what you are doing it? You are getting an exposure to a large area of uh, like of the large area, which is your trans bronchial area. Hai aapke. So, you are getting a much more area which you are sampling. Okay. So this intraalveolar material localized, basically it is localized in the hilar region. Okay. So this reason is also that you have open lung biopsy, you have conclusive result. Nahi de sakte ho. See, biopsy is important in case of a localized lesion. Where you know that there is a lesion here, we have taken a piece and then we can see, in, um, we can make section and then we can study. But where it is diffuse, hai, wahan pe, this biopsy can be inadequate, may not show your representative area and your diagnosis can be misleading also. So, but with bronchial well lavage, what you are getting, you are sampling a much larger area and your probability of giving a definitive diagnosis becomes much more, correct? So, in present case also, we, we had received transbronchial biopsy but did not show a definite result. Kuch lung parenchyma the in our mein. But advantage is that, ek to ye, uh, advantage of uh, bowel fluid is that, ek to humne bataya, jaysa we discussed, ki we can sample large area and also it is a non-invasive procedure. Okay, biopsy is invasive. So, there are also complications. Hote hai, hai? But this is a non-invasive sam uh, sampling method and covering large area. See, so a uh, few words about electron microscopic picture of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. So, characteristic multi-laminated structure is seen when we see it under electron microscopy. This electron microscopy ki image on the basis of the Takemura et al. categorized kiya tha, this uh, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis into four types with bowel fluid sampling. 
सो उसमें टाइप ए बी सी डी दिया था उन्होंने तो ए में क्या है मेजर कॉम्पोनेट दीज ऑल आर इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपिक फाइंडिंग्स ठीक है सो वी इज वेरी रेयरली सी इट तो मेजर कॉम्पोनेंट है इसमें क्या होगा कि कंसेंट्रिक ट्रायल एमिनल स्ट्रक्चर होते हैं कंप्राइज ऑफ टू इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंस लेयर और एक सेंट्रल ल्यूसेंट एयर होगा अल्टरनेटिंग विद वाइडर इलेक्ट्रॉन ल्यूसेंट एयर ठीक है टाइप बी में क्या होता है कंसेंट्रिक लेमिला होता है विद फाइव टू फाइव पॉइंट थ्री नैनोमीटर पेरियोडिसिटी C is composed of a wavy electron dense lamella with 4 to 4.5 nanometer periodicity and similarly type D conglomerated mass hote hain intricately intricately arranged double or triple electron dense layer ke alternate with wider electron lucent layer so it is we will not remember much in detail but you can say that you you have electron microscopy classification for pulmonary alveolar proteinosis सो नाउ एज आई सेट जब भी आप साइटो पे कोई साइटो हिस्टो पे कोई भी स्लाइड आप एग्जामिन करते हो जस्ट डोंट बी बायस्ड विद वन रिजल्ट इफ दिस वाई दिस इफ नॉट वाई नॉट सो ऑलवेज यू शुड हैव दिस क्वेश्चन वाई जब भी वेन यू से सपोज आई एम सेंग दिस इज टी बी वाई देन आई शुड से वाई इट इज नॉट अदर इन्फेक्शन वाई इज नॉट नोकार्डिया वाई इट इज नॉट एक्टिनोमाइकोसिस सो आई शुड हैव अ क्लियर पिक्चर इन माई माइंड वाई दिस डिजीज इज नॉट एंड वाई दिस इज डिजीज इज द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ दिस केस तो जब भी तो इसलिए हमें जब भी कोई हम डिजीज डायग्नोसिस देते हैं तो हमें कंफर्म होना होगा अपने आप कंफर्म करना होगा विद डेफिनेटिव प्रूफ कि व्हाई वी आर सपोर्टिंग दिस डायग्नोसिस ठीक है तो फर्स्ट डायग्नोसिस एज आई सेट कि इन्फेक्शन एसोसिएटेड भी होता था ये सॉरी पलमरी एलवेलर प्रोटीनोसिस सो कॉमन इन्फेक्शन जिसके साथ ये आप कंफ्यूज हो सकते हो दिस इज न्यूमोसिस्टिस कैरनी न्यूमोनिया दिट इज न्यूमोसिस्टिस हिरोविशी इसमें भी क्या होता है जो अगर आप बाल देखोगे इन पेशेंट्स का ब्रॉकेवियर लवाज उसमें फोमी मास और एक्सुडेट्स आते हैं विद डिस्टिंग डार्क डॉट्स जिसमें हमने देखा था वो बिल्कुल प्लेन पिंक ब्लॉचेस जैसे थे पैप में ठीक है पीसीपी में क्या होता है फोमी मास होगा उसमें ब्लैक ब्लैक डॉट्स होते हैं वाई बिकॉज दीज आर हैविंग द पॉजिटिव ऑर्गेनिज्म ठीक है और ये ग्लोब्यूल दिस विल बी पास नेगेटिव एंड जी एम एस पॉजिटिव चतिस ग्रुपोर्स मिथनमीन सिल्वर वॉट इज स्टेन्ड बाई दिस जी एम एस स्टेन तो दो स्टेन हमने यूज करा पास हमने वहां यूज किया था पास में हमारा एलवेला प्रोटीनोसिस पॉजिटिव आ गया यहां हमने जी एम एस और पास दोनों यूज किया क्योंकि हमें यह बताना भी है कि हाँ ये है वो है नहीं है तो जी एम एस स्टेन पीसीपी के केस में पॉजिटिव आएगा विल गिव यू अ क्रस्ट पिंग पॉन्ग बॉल अपियरेंस विद द फ्रॉथी कास्ट फ्रॉथी कास्ट था बीच में ब्लैक डॉट सो दैट ब्लैक डॉट इज गेटिंग इट जी एम एस पॉजिटिव सो इट इज स्पेसिफाइंग दैट दिस इज हम ऑर्गेनिज्म so this two stains are very important pass and uh, uh, gm gms so gms is positive in pneumococcus is uh, cases and pass is positive in our alveolar proteinosis cases to so second case hai hum differential diagnosis hamara ho sakta hai amyloidosis so because we have seen cases of amyloid laringo tracheo bronchial amyloidosis i'll discuss this case in subsequent lecture we had reported that case also सो so, उसमें देखो एमाइलोडोसिस भी हो सकता है जिसमें अगर सपोज बाल फ्यूड में पिंक ब्लॉचेस एमाइलोडोसिस के केस में भी आते हैं ठीक है बट दैट डिपॉजिट्स जो पिंक ब्लॉचेस जो हमने कहा शुड बी डिफ्रेंशिएटेड फ्रॉम द पैप डिपॉजिट्स तो कैसा होगा एमाइलॉयड आपको पता है दैट इज कॉन्गोरेट पॉजिटिव तो अगर कॉन्गोरेट स्टेन यूज कर लो और पास स्टेन यूज करो पास स्टेन यहाँ नेगेटिव आ जाएगा कॉन्गोरेट पॉजिटिव आ जाएगा विद ऑरेंज रेड स्टेन गिविंग अ टिपिकल एप्पल ग्रीन बाय रेफरेंजेंस अगर हम उसको पोलराइज लाइट के अंडर देखते हैं ठीक है सो so, ये हो गया हमारा स्टेन एक तो साइटो पे अगर ये तीनों में इन तीनों केसेस में एलवेला प्रोटीनोसिस न्यूमोसिस्टिस हिरोविशी एंड एमाइलोडोसिस यू आर गेटिंग पिंक ब्लॉच तो डिफरेंस क्या है जो हमारा एलवेला प्रोटीनोसिस वाला पिंक ब्लॉच होता है दैट इज एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर बिल्कुल होमोजीनियस ब्लॉचेस ठीक है ऑन साइटो न्यूमोसिस्टिस हिरोविशी में इट्स अ फ्रॉथी डिपॉजिट पिंक डिपॉजिट विद ब्लैक डॉट अमायलॉडोसिस में भी आपका पेल पिंक ब्लॉचेस होते हैं तो अब हमें यूज करना है स्पेशल स्टेन ताकि हम इन तीनों के पिंक ब्लॉचेस को डिफ्रेंशिएट कर सके तो दो स्टेन तीन स्टेन आप याद रखो आस जी एम एस दैट इज गोमरीज मिथन मेन सिल्वर एंड थर्ड इज कॉन्गोरेट सो पैप विल शो यू पॉजिटिविटी फॉर पास देन दिस न्यूमोसिस हिरोविशी विल शो यू पॉजिटिविटी फॉर जी एम एस स्टेन एंड अमायलॉड विल शो यू पॉजिटिविटी फॉर कॉन्गोरेट ठीक है तो एंड इन दोनों केसेस में पीसीपी और अमायलोडोसिस में यू हैव टू एडिशनली यूज पास ताकि दिस बोथ विल शो नेगेटिविटी फॉर पास सो बाय यूजिंग दीज थ्री स्टेन यू कैन वेरी वेल डिफ्रेंशिएट दीज थ्री एंटिटीज 
fine uske alawa if you have excess or facility of electron microscopy very 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 it's very good so ultra structural findings jaise humne padha tha takimurotol ke four type a b c d jisme bhi fit aata hai you can give a diagnosis and exact diagnosis also which type it is so isme hame interlacing meshwork of non branching fibrils milte hain jo dimensions ke according type a b c d वो आप डिफ्रेंशिएट कर सकते हो व्हेन यू आर फ्रीक्वेंट विद इलेक्ट्रो माइक्रोस्कोपी कुछ और डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस यू कैन कीप इट इन माइंड इज लाइक रिजॉल्विंग निमोनिया में भी ये पिक्चर आ सकती है रेडियोलॉजी पे और साइटो पे देन ड्रग्स रिलेटेड सम टॉक्सिसिटी साइड इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ड्रग्स आल्सो सो दैट्स व्हाई इन दोनों केसेस में क्या होगा अ प्रॉपर क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री सो इन सारे डिफरेंशियल को रूल आउट करने के लिए वी नीड एन इंटीग्रेटेड अप्रोच स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री साइकोलॉजिकल फाइंडिंग रेडियोलॉजिकल फाइंडिंग सब मिला के एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ एनी ड्रग्स क्योंकि ड्रग हिस्ट्री में भी आपको वैक्यूलेटेड हिस्टोसाइड्स मिल सकते हैं ठीक है सो टॉक्सिसिटी तो आप पेश पता होगा आपको कि हाँ ये पेशेंट इस ड्रग पे है इतने टाइम से सो दो ड्रग कैन शो दिस काइंड ऑफ चेंज दैट ऑल्सो यू शुड नो ठीक है सो दैट विल हेल्प अस इन डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग पैप फ्रॉम अदर एंटिटीज एंड गिविंग अ डेफिनेटिव डायग्नोसिस ऑफ पलमरी एल्व्यूला प्रोटीनोसिस मैनेजमेंट सी बाल इट वॉज अ डायग्नोस्टिक और थेरापेटिक दोनों हो सकता है ब्रॉन्क एल्व्यूल लवाज टू गिव अ सिम्टोमेटिक रिलीव टू द पेशेंट ऑल्सो पेशेंट का पलमरी फंक्शन भी इंप्रूव होता है ठीक है थेरापेटिक बाल कहते हैं डिफिकल्ट रिक्वायरिंग आइसोलेशन ऑफ द लंग तो उसमें क्या होता है लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ सलाइन इन्फ्यूजन चाहिए जनरल एनेसिशिया एंड क्लोज मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ द पेशेंट्स वेंटिलेटर स्टेटस सो बेसिकली आप रिमूवल ऑफ इंट्रा एल्वुलर लाइफोटेंशियस मटेरियल इज द मेन लाइन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट उसके अलावा आपको सिम्टोमेटिक ट्रीटमेंट देने होंगे अकॉर्डिंग टू द साइन एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ द पेशेंट और क्लिनिकल कोर्स बहुत वेरिएबल है एल्वुलर प्रोटीनोसिस का बहुत कभी कभी बहुत सीवियर हाइपोक्सीमिया लेके भी पेशेंट प्रेजेंट करता है हार्ट फेलियर और इवन रेस्पिरेटरी फेलियर इन दैट इज सीन इन फिफ्टी टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ केसेस बट वेरी रेयरली डेथ में आकर क्योंकि सुपर इम्पोज इन्फेक्शन हो सकते हैं पेशेंट में सो यू हैव टू मैनेज अकॉर्डिंग टू द साइन एंड सिम्टम ऑफ द पेशेंट आर केस पेशेंट रिस्पॉन्डेड वेरी वेल टू द कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट एंड विद दिस ब्रॉन्कोल लवाज जो एक्स्ट्रा एक्यूमुलेशन हो रही थी दैट वॉज रिमूव एंड पेशेंट वॉज हैविंग सिम्टोमेटिक रिलीफ एंड प्रेजेंटली ऑल्सो शी इज डूइंग वेल सो टू कंक्लूड दिस केस See, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. It's potentially fatal, though rare lung disorder, and it can mimic many other pulmonary lung pulmonary diseases. Radiographically, in fact, on cytological also, as we see, as we see in cases with the neuro such as hirovishi and alveolar, sorry, amyloidosis. So, bowel fluid ka examination is very important, and that advantage hai. Iska do main ki ek to invasive procedure nahi hai ye. This is non-invasive. and you are getting exposure to the larger area so larger area ki sampling hoti hai isme theek hai so early and effective management can be given with this simple bronco alveolar lavage examined on cytological evaluation theek hai so thereby this will decrease morbidity that is suffering of the patient and mortality also agar early diagnosis hui early treatment de diya apne patient ko so this just to show you this case was published so thank you so much for your patient hearing and uh, next week i shall be discussing one more rare case along with uh, one more lecture for our cell injury so this both sh shall go side by side so i'll try to give you two lectures per week one with the, uh, the lectures of the proper general pathology stabi jo hum cell injury ka kar rahe so once we finish i think we have done three lectures on cell injury Uh, so I shall be covering uh, cell injury in I think next two more lectures and then uh, with subsequent lecture also next week जिसे मैं cell injury की lecture post करूँगी आप लोगों के लिए and then I'll post one rare case also ठीक है so actually I want uh, the, it can be helpful for the PG student also who are in more into diagnostics ठीक है so when this give you a real approach like how you see your case तो जब आप case FNA कर रहे हो तो आपको क्या-क्या चीजें mind में रखनी चाहिए so that I want to focus on that. So you should, when you have a global approach, ki ha, this case is going to be something uh, 
आउट ऑफ ट्रैक नॉर्मल नहीं है ये तो आपको क्या क्या चीजें चाहिए आपको रेडियोलॉजी चाहिए आपको ये चाहिए सो इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल कोलेबोरेशन इज वेरी मच रिक्वायर्ड सो डू डिस्कस विद योर इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल कलीग्स इफ यू गेट एन एफ एन एसी की वाई नॉट दिस टू ट्राई टू डिस्कस अ डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस सो दैट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू इन अराइविंग एट अ करेक्ट डायग्नोसिस फाइन सो प्लीज लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड शेयर दिस चैनल दैट विल एक्चुअली प्रमोट मी टू पोस्ट मोर लेक्चर्स एंड स्पेशली ऑन टाइम Okay thank you so much